Hey people, Ashwin here from Circuit Digest and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your very own IR meter like this. So IR meter is nothing but an internal resistance meter which can be used to check the resistance of your batteries. So if you're working with battery packs, if you're building battery packs, say like this one, it is very important for you to measure the IR of each cell and make sure all the cells are in the same IR. Now to do this, basically there are meters which are readily available in the market like this one over here uh, which costs about 5500 rupees you can use these probes to check the internal resistance of each and every cell but for this video we have built something more cheap and more fun it is a PCB based project as you can see here and all you have to do is just insert the cell here and it will calculate the IR and display it on the OLED over here sounds interesting right so let's see how to do it Okay, here we have the board along with the schematics for this project. But before we get there, it is important for me to announce the sponsors for this video, PCBWay. PCBWay provides high quality PCB fabrication and prototype services. They are well equipped to handle standard and advanced PCB designs and can also provide SMD stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time, quick customer support and also supports the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next PCB. Okay, now let me tell you how the board works in general. So for calculating the IR resistance, we should calculate uh, three parameters in total. One would be the open circuit voltage of the cell. And the second would be we'll be connecting this cell to this load resistor through the MOSFET over here. And then we'll be measuring the load current and the voltage drop. Using these three values, we will be able to calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Now, if this is confusing for you, you can check the formula along with the detailed description uh, using the link which can be found at the description of this video. Now, that being said, let me quickly show you how this thing works. Let me bring it closer. And as I told you, you can see that our board measures uh, four parameters in total. The first one would be the voltage, which is the open circuit voltage of this battery, which was 3.833 volts. And then the current, which was flowing through this load resistance, which is 1.917. And then the voltage during which the current was flowing, that is the voltage drop, will be 3.7 and using these three values we have calculated the internal resistance so these are the four values which are being measured and calculated by our meter over here the first one would be the open circuit voltage which is 3.833 volts the second one would be the current which was flowing through this load resistor after the MOSFET connected the battery to the load which is 1.917 and the third one would be the closed circuit voltage which will be 3.1 sorry 3.7 and the last one is the internal resistance which is calculated at 0.45 now what i will do is i will remove this cell and insert another cell and show you the internal resistance for this as well and then we'll be comparing this with an actual ir meter to know how much accurate we are with this meter so for this blue color cell the internal resistance calculated is around 0.045 as you can see here Okay, so now what I have done is I have uh, inserted this purple color battery and as you can see here the internal resistance calculated for this cell is around 0.055 ohms. Now if I press the reset button again it will calculate it again and again the result is almost same it's 0.055 it's in fact exactly same. So now we know that for this cell the IR was calculated to be around 0.055 and for this cell we calculated it to be around 0.045 let's see if these values are accurate by connecting it to an actual ir meter okay now we have an actual ir meter over here it shows the voltage of the cell as well as uh, the internal resistance of the cell so let's start with the blue color cell over here uh, as you can remember it was 0.045 ohms or 45 milli ohms let's check it with an actual ir meter and can see that we are measuring about 40 milli ohms or 39.6 which is 40 milli ohms so we have around uh, 5 milli ohms tolerance now let's check for this purple cell again positive to the positive probe and the negative probe 
so this one shows about uh, 60.2 milliohms and with the ir meter we measured it to be around 55 milliohms so yeah around plus or minus 5 milliohms tolerance is there but you can pretty much use it because we are just going to compare one cell with another cell so we know that these two cells are off by at least 10 milliohms and it is not recommended to use them in the same battery pack now why is that because if you are building a battery pack and if each of the cells are of different ir what will happen is the cell with the least ir will be charging and discharging more faster so let's say for this battery pack if you are consuming around uh, 5 amps from this side now all of these cells should push 5 amps and split it split the load equally among themselves and that will happen only if the ir is almost same for all these cells say for example if this cell has a very low ir it will try to push more current in the other cells and hence it will get discharged faster and even while charging it will accept more charge than the other cells and it will get charged faster and the BMS here will cut off the pack before it charges or discharges completely so yeah now we know uh, how our meter works how in how the importance of IR is so let us quickly see how the schematics for our board works here okay so to make you understand how the entire thing works let me remove the OLED screen over here so that you will be able to see the most two important ICs on this board one is the 80 tiny 85 microcontroller and the other is an op amp now looking at the schematics you can find the 80 tiny 85 microcontroller here so let's start with this section only let me zoom in a bit okay so this 80 tiny 85 is powered by this v in pin which comes from a usb jack so this board uh, does need a usb power 5 volt to operate properly so as you can see the controller is powered by the 5 volt pin from the uh, micro usb port and then uh, we have a oled display which is used to display all the values on this board the oled screen uh, works with i2c communication so uh, there are four pins two for power and two for communication the scl pin is the serial clock and the sda pin is the serial data pin both of which are used for i2c communication and it is connected to our microcontroller over here and then we have a button to reset the entire thing connected to pb5 over here through this sw label which you can see here and then we have an op amp and a mosfet which you can find on the board here this is the mosfet that we are using and this is the op amp so what this basically does is it generates a pwm pin from the 80 tiny 85 microcontroller to control this mosfet and connect it to this particular load which is our two resistors in series now we are doing all this because we will be able to measure the load current as well as the load of uh, resistance value which is already a known value and then we will be able to measure the open circuit and the closed circuit voltage of the cell by turning on and off this MOSFET. So that is what is happening here. The PWM signal is provided to the op amp which in fact controls the MOSFET and this thing is connecting the battery to our load resistor over here which you can also see on the schematics over here. And this is just the battery slot uh, which is used for uh, uh, measuring the IR. So uh, the ADC pin on this 80 tiny 85 is used to measure the voltage drop across this uh, cell so both the OCV and the load voltage is measured by the IDC which is inbuilt into this 80 tiny 85 so yes the schematics is very simple the program is also simple again I'm not going to explain the program in this video you can find that at the link given in the description of this video okay now you know how the entire schematics works and you can also download the gerber file for the circuit directly from the link in the description once the gerber file is ready all you have to do is order your pcbs and to do that we recommend pcbway.com so get over to their website www.pcbway.com and enter the dimensions of your pcb upload your gerber file and then make the payment online and within few days your pcbs would arrive directly to your doorstep and as you can see the quality of their PCBs and their finishing is simply perfect. I had no problems with my PCBs whatsoever. I have been using their servers for a long time. Their wires, their tolerance, their pitch, everything is simply perfect. All you have to do is assemble the components and get your project working. So that is it guys. This is all for the video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned how to build your very own IR meter like this one. For more such projects, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned and I will see you on next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.